You've been lounging, lounging with Skipper. <laughs> You've been lounging, lounging with Skipper. What's going on, everybody? I want to welcome you all to another um, episode of uh, Lounging with Skip, where um, I sit and I talk with different people in the entertainment industry to, uh, you know, just see where they where they are in life and what got them to where they are. And so I've been blessed with this uh, outlet to be able to reach out to people across the, the globe um, as far as people that I've come in contact with in my journey as well. Um, so I want to welcome you all to uh, episode 43 of Lounging with Skip. Um, today I'm sitting with a man who I met on the, on, on the set of SEAL Team and I believe he came in like halfway through the season and we just, you know what I'm saying, vibed out and, um, you know what I'm saying, became cool uh, working with each other on set. You know what I'm saying? I was keeping them fresh with the cuts to make sure that, you know what I'm saying, everything was in place for him and being represented, um, you know what I'm saying, the right way um, on, 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 on TV. Um, I saw when he came in um, to, get for, to, to get for his fitting, and I saw his hair, and I said, "Nah, man, I can't. I can't have to go out there and look at like that." So, you know, I, I, I was able to be blessed to be able to keep him looking fresh for uh, season four. So, make sure um, for those that are watching this interview to go back and and watch uh, Seal Team uh, season four to catch all the um, the moments of when this man began to enter. I want to welcome actor Mike Wade. To Yo, thank you for having me. Forty three lounging with Skip. Um, before we even get to, you know, all the other stuff, um, where, where are you originally, you know, from? Where were you born? Uh, well, actually, you know what, man? I was, um, I was born on Sunset Boulevard on my way to the hospital. You were born on Sunset Boulevard? Yep, heading to uh, Sunset Kaiser, man. I was, uh, I was two weeks early. Mm. Uh, and, you a, know, premium, a premium. Yep, because I, well, I had to be a Leo, you know what I'm saying? So I had to, uh, <laughs> I had to get up uh, into the world. And uh, yeah, so your birthday's in August. Yeah, yeah, I'm August twentieth. Okay. Uh, so you know, just barely made it. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, man. So uh, originally from the uh, South Central uh, Inglewood area, um, moved out of there uh, about when I was ten. So you know, a little bit east of uh, Los Angeles, and been back in LA. You know, ever since I've been going for the acting thing. Now, um, as a kid you know, in your earlier years, um, was there anything that, when was it that where you uh, became gravitated, where you gravitated towards um, TV? Were you like interested in, in, in acting back then as far as your first moments of watching TV and, and seeing actors on, 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 on that, the small screen? Yeah, man, you know, actually, um, I always had an interest in acting. You know, it took me a while to, you know, admit it and have the courage to actually go for it, uh, to think that it was something that I actually could do. Um, but yeah, when I was younger, uh, you know, for a, a moment, it was just me and my mom. Uh, so, you know, I would go to the YMCA. They kept, you know, plenty of activities, keep me busy. And sometimes we would do plays, little skits. And I think that's probably part of, you know, me getting the acting bug. So, then, uh, so you were like a little kid during this time? Yeah, yeah, I was, I was a little kid, so um, you know, I was I was about seven uh, mm. when my my biological father was killed. Mm. Uh, so you know, it was just me and my mom for a minute after that, and so um, which actually I think plays into my interest in acting. Um, that I'll, I'll get to in a second. Mm. Uh, but yeah, anytime I was in class, man, anytime you know, we had to speak in front of the class, and everybody was scared to do it. I was always you know, first one raised my hand to get up there. And, uh, you know, over the years, I never really thought about it, but recently it's kind of come to mind that uh, John Singleton's Boys in the Hood, you know, that, around the time when that came out, that was around the time when, you know, my pops uh, was murdered. Mm. And it, it kind of reflected, you know, where we were at. I was, I was a little guy, so I, I didn't really get it. Uh, but, you know, obviously now as an adult, I get it. Uh, you know, mom's had a lot to deal with and uh, it's keeping me safe, keeping my mind occupied on the right things. And, so, you know, we sat down and watched that movie. She wanted me to see kind of what's out there. Uh, I think through the storytelling, it probably made me want to, you know, just get into this and 
you know, contribute however that I could, uh, you know, telling powerful stories, man. So even at an earlier, at a young age, that was kind of began that moment in your life where you wanted to be a part of television to be able to act out different actors and moments that can portray, um, you know, something that can be beneficial for others to that are watching this to kind of portray a, a character, so to speak. You knew this at a younger age, at around seven years old, eight years old. Yeah, I, I believe so, man. Maybe not, you know, consciously, but somewhere, you know, like subconsciously or, you know, in my kind of in my gut, you know, my instincts just kind of led me to that because storytelling is powerful in whatever medium, you know, whether it's television, film, or just, you know, sitting around telling these stories. Uh, you know, I, for me, man, Denzel is one of my, my favorite actors. And uh, even before I really thought about getting into acting, uh, after watching his films, I just wanted to do the right thing, like in life, you know? So if I can reach however many people uh, in, in that same way, man, that's, that's what it is. That's what it's about. What was one of uh, Denzel's first movies that you saw or that inspired you? <laughs> um, man, I mean, it's so many, but you know, really, man, honestly, the first thing that comes to mind uh, was Ricochet. Mm. That, was, that, was, that was the first, uh, the first thing I, I think I really saw him in. Uh, and, you know, it's, I mean, he was a hero. He's a good guy. You know what I mean? And as people say, representation is important. And if we if we have somebody who looks like us on the screen, that's helpful. Uh, if we don't, then we just have to imagine it. Uh, but yeah, he just he did the right thing. You know, he was he was a family man. And he was a, he was a officer. He was a lawyer. He just had these huge aspirations. And you know, I'm just like looking at him on the screen, like yeah, that's you know, this, this is this is what it's about. You know, mm -hmm. he wasn't portraying anything negative, uh, putting that out there. And actually, when he does, there's always some consequence to make you say, yeah, you know, what? I don't want to do that. So, uh, yeah, I now, guess we got to go Ricochet. Now, now, Ricochet, was Ricochet after Malcolm X? I don't know, man. I would have to look that up. Yeah. I would have to look that up. But but obviously, Malcolm X, I mean, Thanks. for the longest time, I thought that was Malcolm X. <laughs> you know, I mean, he, he did that, that great of a job, man. And that was my introduction to Malcolm you know, later I, I read the autobiography. So that was your introduction to Malcolm X was watching that movie. Exactly. So that to me just showed me how powerful storytelling is. Mm -hmm. Later I went on to read the autobiography, learn more about, uh, you know, this fascinating man. But yeah, man, it's, you know, through telling of that, his story through a film. So that's what inspires me, uh, you know, to be able to do that same thing. I think my first, it's interesting you talk about Denzel. I think my first introduction of Denzel was seeing him in the scene in uh what's the movie uh with him and uh Matthew Broderick when he was getting well oh, glory. glory glory that that yeah. scene that scene and then the other um movie he was in uh, a soldier story oh yep yep, yep, soldier yep, yep, story. yep but you know I think even before those two he was on a show called Saint Elsewhere Yes, he was. That was his first his first thing. He's a doctor. Yeah. So I remember seeing that, you know, back then as a kid myself, wondering who is this black guy, you know what I'm saying, portraying this doctor at such an yeah. age. Because once again, you know, me, you know, while we're in the TV and film world, is that somewhere along the lines in our journey, the TV and film kind of uh, uh, resonated with us. And so even if it wasn't for me acting, it was for me watching and viewing and 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 perceiving and seeing that from my eyes of what it was that I was um, witnessing, you know what I mean, at such an early age. And so to me, that was dope. Um, by the time you got to junior high, were you involved in like any plays or anything like that? Um, no, not, nothing really major, man. Um, like I said, it, it would mostly be like in a class type setting. So if we... We're doing some project that we acting something out. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm all on that. But I think what it was, man, for so many years, I thought that I had to get a, you know, like a quote unquote real job or, you know, something like that, and, you know, be practical. Um, it just felt so out of reach, yeah. you know, but then, you know, one day I decided to go for it and I'm, I'm so glad I, I did. You know, it's so crazy, man. Uh, from you know listening to what you just said with it seems so out of reach me being from st louis you know two thousand miles away thinking about hollywood that really felt 
out of seemed out of reach. Whereas you, you were in LA and yet yeah. still it seemed it still seemed out of reach. But really sure. it kind of goes to show that it's not nothing that is attainable is necessarily unreachable. And oh, that absolutely. we can reach anything we really want in this life if we really just set out to go grab it. So that's just so interesting from the scope of where you were to where I was and here we both are. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yes, yeah, it's, it's uh to me, it highlights the uh, the power of the mind, and when you put your your mind to something, yeah, uh, and you, the power you put your of the action and the action, and the action behind it, and uh, it, so just uh, I hope to do the same thing, you're just inspiring people. Like for example, I got you know nieces and nephews, and I, oh, Uncle Mike's on TV, and so like right there, yeah, it, if they want to do the same thing or something else, it's they see that things are possible, yeah, you know, and. To me, man, that's that's really what it's about. It's an inspiration. So when you started high school, was that like uh, the movie The Wood for you? Was it just like, you know, <laughs> like, like what was high school like coming up in, in L.A. for you? Man, you know, uh, for, for me, man, high school was, uh, I mean, I was, I was just uh, walking around with the word. You know, I was I was heavily into church. Man. I, I went really? to church. Bro, I went to church. <laughs> at least four times a week. Really? Yeah, Sunday, like a Monday night Bible study, Tuesday youth group. Uh, Wednesday was probably like a lunchtime thing. So I was, I was, yeah. Uh, your, mom was, day, your mom was covering you with the blood of Jesus, man. Bro, was I was like, soaked in it. <laughs> uh, matter of fact, uh, for the longest time, man, they thought I was gonna be a preacher. And uh, I, I think I did too. I thought about going to like a Bible college, but. Really? Ended up not doing that, and uh, I mean, you know, I, I kind of consider it not the same thing, but putting that good message out there, man. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, religious. It's you know just a, a good word to somebody, encourage somebody. That you know the cautionary tale. Yeah. Uh, you know that's to me, it's close enough. Yeah. You know? So, so by you walking around school in high school with the Bible and all, and what all that, were you going around preaching to, to folks, or were you just kind of in your own lane doing you? Oh, I had the tracks. I had the tracks. <laughs> I had the little Bible tracks, and uh, I, you know, but you know, that's that's the thing, though. I really noticed that, like looking back, I feel like it really just e evolved into me being somebody that people could talk to, you know, which I still am today. Uh, I just have a more open mind when it comes to religion. And, uh, I think also too, for me studying uh, Christianity and uh, Islam and you know other things, I can see where things connect and I could, I could serve as a bridge between people when it comes to religion or just anything. Like I can recognize when two people are arguing and saying kind of the same thing, but they don't get it because they're so wrapped up in the emotion, mm. you know? Uh, and then I went on to study psychology. So I think it all kind of just wrapped up into that, that same thing. And uh, when I was uh, really little, I, I, you know, I told my mom I wanted to be a doctor. Uh, you know, she was very happy about that. But, you know, looking back once again, I think it just, uh, it just comes back to me wanting to help people. I just, I just really love people. I want to understand people and, you know, see how I can help them out uh, or, you know, actually get people to be able to help themselves, you know, just uh, like we say, with with the mind, and, uh, putting our uh, our thoughts into it, and then our action behind it. You know. Right. Now, graduated from high school, you so you at this point in life, you weren't like in theater or anything like that. You were still just kind of, you know, straight laced with it. You know, what I'm saying Bible school. You know, what I mean, going to class. You know, uh, yeah. did you go to college? Did you? Yeah, I did. I did. I went to uh, I went to college, and uh, that's actually where I got. It. I went to I stayed uh, local. I went to San Bernardino, so I wasn't too far. Okay. Um, yeah, Cal State, and um, wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I ended up with psychology. You know, once again, it's because you know we studying people, studying the mind, and I was like, this is cool, man. I get to learn about all these different things. Um, did that for a little bit, but then my senior year, man, you know, a buddy says, hey, let's uh. Let's take these two acting classes. Oh. And, uh, and but at the time, I was like, well, I don't want to be around actors because actors are weird. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, mm. and uh, you know, later I realized what I meant by that was actors express themselves, and I did mm. it. You know, I held a lot of stuff in. Mm. And uh, I'm a much better person for it because I'm much more understanding, uh, much more open-minded. 
And yeah, this it just really changed my life for the better. So did you end up getting your degree in psychology? I did, yeah, I did. Uh, I was actually gonna do industrial organizational psychology, which is workplace stuff. So, um, you know, any HR stuff, when they measure to see what kind of training is working, uh, when they hire people, when they let people go, all that stuff, uh, that's, that's what that is. And that's what I was gonna do. But then I took those two classes, and now I'm sitting here talking to Skip. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, now tell me, so you got your degree, but in the last semester of school, you took two acting classes. So that was kind of the bridge, which kind of entered into the transition after school to decide to go into more of the acting versus taking that degree and going for like some type of psychology job. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happened. Yeah. Well, yeah, because well, so if you're doing psychology, you at least got to get your master's. Mm. And so I would have had to continue with that. But I got bit by that bug, man. And you know what? Things really started to change for me because even at work, I've always been somebody who enjoys work and all that. Work was just different for me, man. The, the clock started going real slow. Mm. What, that, what that really meant to me was like, you know what? You find what you want to do. That's why this is just moving slow motion to you because it doesn't have the same meaning anymore, or you wow. you realize it doesn't really mean the same, you, wow. you know. Yeah. So uh, it was like it was kind of just the beginning of my journey, man. It's it evolving as a person, you know. So so that realization at that point in your life, you begin to, you know, you were kind of going through what it was that you were conditioned into, what society conditions us as to being, you know, get a degree, go to, you know, get a nine to five, you know, get that. You know, what I mean, get married, have the white picket fence with the dog and the yard Ooh. type of mentality. And here you were at this nine to five, uh, unhappy, watching the time, yeah. constantly watching, watching the clock, realizing that time is going slow because you really don't feel like being here. I don't want to be there. Yeah. And for the people who do want to be there, that's all good. For the people who want the white yeah. picket fence and all those things, hey, yeah. that's all good. But you got to make sure you make that conscious choice that that's what you want. Versus just following what everybody else is doing. Right. You know, I, I kind of got, uh, was it Revolutionary Road with uh, Leo and Kate? Mm -hmm. um, there was a scene when he was coming out of, I guess, the office or whatever, and everybody looked the same. They all had their hats on. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn, that's a powerful image right there, because that's kind of how I was feeling. Like, mm -hmm. I was just kind of going through the motions, and I just wasn't aware of it. Wow. You know? Wow. So it's like my eyes were open now. I was like, well, you got to do what you need to do, mm -hmm. you know? So, oh, so, uh, so now that you got, so now that you, okay, you caught this bug, um, when was that moment where you said, okay, you know what, enough is enough, this is my last day doing this, I'm going full force yeah. in that. What, what moment was that for you? Do you remember that day? Man, you know what? Um, it was a couple of moments, because what I did was, uh, so once I graduated, you know, college with the psych degree, uh, I was working, but also I went to a, at one point I went to a junior college to take an acting class just to make sure it's what I want to do before I pay for them professional classes. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but it's a couple of things. Another time when I was, uh, I'm sitting in a movie theater and I'm watching Will Smith in Pursuit of Happiness. Mm. And I'm like, if this brother could do this, if Will Smith could tell this story, if Chris Gardner can rise up out of what he was in, I can do what it is that I want to do. I'm sitting in that movie theater by myself. It's in the middle of the day. And I'm like, I'm going for it. Uh, that was the moment. Uh, also, I was working at a university. And um, like I said, time is just going slow, bro. <laughs> I'm like, so I'm helping people go to school, which is cool. But I'm yeah. like, this ain't it for me. And so I put in my two weeks. I'm like, I got to do this. It's, it's in December. Matter of fact, I believe it was December 7th. So I still celebrate that day. Wow. Uh, yeah. And uh, when I was leaving, there was a young lady who was who had just gotten hired and she was coming out of acting or, or pursuing uh, uh, a career in acting. She was she like, pursuing acting. And so she had she was done with it. Now she's working at the university hmm. and she's like, oh, it's just too hard or something like that. And I was like, wow. So I'm always going to remember that because. I was going out as she was coming in, 
You know what you know I mean? What's interesting about that and, and you saying that sometimes in moments of the uncomfortableness that you were um, taking in of leaving, you you know, it seems like the enemy always wants to put you in a position of doubt. So when that young lady was coming in saying what she was saying, it was yeah. kind of like a little bit of that visual doubt thrown in your face to say, you know what, maybe she's right, ah, I'm good, and to go back, but to- It's that fear, bro. Yeah, the fear. So it was, so, but, but I think that it wasn't, it was just, that was somebody that you had to come in contact with to kind of, oh, still, yeah. in a way, God was was placing her in front of you to 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 test your um your faith in him. See, yeah. a lot of this deals with Absolutely. having your faith in what God is doing for you. You know what I mean? And what he already oh, yeah. instilling into us. And sometimes certain things that get placed in front of us to say, are you gonna take what it is that you know the fear or are you gonna have faith? So is it going to be fear or faith? Which one is it going? To, which one are you going to do? And, it, and it's and it's that making that choice, man. And uh, you know, even even to this day, man, I'm still getting reminded. Um, I don't need to try to really do anything. I don't need to try to orchestrate this. All I got to do is sit back, and when I sit back, it actually goes better. You know, um, SEAL Team is something that uh, is we'll, reminding we'll, me of that. We'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, so, I feel, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get um, to that. So, yeah, because yeah. in those situations, you're just a passenger in God's vehicle. Yeah, see, I'm glad we're having this too. conversation. You know, what I'm saying, um, because I can talk about this type of stuff uh, all day long as well. Because I'm a true testament to, you know, what I'm saying, of, of witnessing, um, you know, what I mean, uh, the way God moves, and you know, I think with each of us, sometimes in those moments we get tested with our faith and it's about really hearing that, that, that feeling that gut instinct, but also hearing his, his voice speak to you to say, go for it. I got you. Don't worry about it. I got you. And when you begin to, when you begin to, to, to take, to turn down the fear and be able to hear that, that voice that's saying, I got you. You just, your, 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 your mind, your, your, your energy becomes more relaxed in, in the space of just enjoying the ride, yeah. um, which is pushes yeah. us forward to, because if you said pursuit of happiness, that was like 2000, that's like 2006, 2007. So yeah. going into like 2008, 2009, you were taking acting classes and things of that nature. So now you're around other actors of you know like-minded people now right. your network is beginning to grow. How was that, um, so to speak, going, you know, moving forward for you as far as now you're building this network of different actors and actresses in your, your field? Man, it was, uh, it was beautiful, man, because I was just looking at, I was looking at them with admiration because a lot of them have been acting since they were, you know, younger or they at least, you know, that's what they got their degree in. And I was like, wow, they, they've really been, at this for all this time, you know, um, it just, it just so eye opening. The world was so much bigger mm. and uh, an even more beautiful place. Um, it was, it was just dope, man, because I got to see people who were doing what they wanted to do in their life. Uh, well, most likely, because that's another thing too. Sometimes we get drawn to this field because we maybe we want the attention and all that kind of stuff. And that's something that we all got to work out, you know, within ourselves. Um, but for the most part, people love that self-expression and storytelling. And that's the mo majority of the people that I met. Mm. Now, yeah. what was the first, uh, for you, the first gig, which offered you a sense of now you're acting in front of a camera? Mm. First thing that comes to mind for that man was uh, I was doing like a student film and I just remember at one moment seeing a camera, seeing all these people. I said, like, man, it takes all these people to make a, uh, make a film, even like, like a student film, little short things. And I was like, this is a lot of work and this is a team effort. 
And it's like, you got to bring your A game every take. Uh, so even, so I noticed that back then and uh, I kept that mentality, mm. you know, no matter what I was doing, mm. if it was a student film, indie, uh, you know, working on some big TV show, some film, I keep that same attitude because it's about the story. And uh, it's about, for me, I always feel like, you know, somebody's going to watch this and they're going to get something from it. It's going to reflect their life. And that's like one of the most rewarding things, you know. Now, <clears throat> let's fast forward. You know what I'm saying? So during that period, you're taking student films, this, that, and the third. What was the what was the moment where um, you know, maybe like you were on something? Because before I get to the these most recent two, what mm -hmm. were some of the something what were some of the uh moments in your career where what you were being seen was on a major platform. Well, uh, projects were on a major platform. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, what I, what I think of, man, was how I got into the union, actually, how I got into- uh, Yeah, let's talk about that now, now for uh, actors. What is, what is the union? What I mean? Yeah, so the Screen Actors Guild or SAG AFTRA, because now they've merged. Uh, that's what everybody wants to get into, you know. Uh, initially, what I actually, you know, what I did, man, because I was new, I didn't know anybody. I'm kind of just going off what people tell me, and they're like, "Yeah, you know, you want to get into the union," even though I didn't really have that much experience. Which, you know, you kind of want to wait till you know what you're doing for you are going against <laughs> people who union actors, you know, professionally. Really? Okay. Yeah, you you want to get your chops right. You want to uh, study. You want to get experience. Before you you want to know become union. Yeah, before you get into the union, okay. Uh, which I which I ultimately did, uh, because initially what I was doing was trying to get my SAG card, doing background. That could take who knows how long. So any any actors listening, they they were like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you, you need those three vouchers. Take Ten years, twelve years. I you know you need three vouchers, but three jobs don't equal three vouchers of doing background. So what I decided to do was like, well, okay, well I'm not gonna do that. I'm a do these student films, do these indie films where I have lines and get the experience uh, and also get some tape that I can show people. And that actually ended up helping me because uh, after doing that, how I got into the, how I got into the union was through a tap Hartman. Uh, it was a feature film uh, with Danny Glover and Graham Greene and a lot of other uh, veteran actors. Okay. Uh, I just happened to fit the part. The union actors didn't. So that's how I got into the union. Mm, and what, and what, what movie was that? Uh, name of that film is called From Above. From Above. Uh, yeah. So, like I said, Danny Glover's in it, uh, mm -hmm. and I play. We play the same character. I played a younger version of his character, and man, that movie went all over. Man, I got to travel to the different film festivals, and you know, so that was probably not 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 probably that was definitely like that moment was something that you know I got a pretty good you know blip from it and it's like yeah this is a uh, this is pretty cool nice 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 now yeah. I'm noticing uh you were on an episode of uh timeless oh yeah 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 timeless yeah. and I'm seeing here that you were on NCIS yeah how was uh you working on a a show like an NCIS at that point in your life for you well that was cool man because I got to uh that was my second TV gig, mm -hmm. um, and I got to work with Mark Harmon. And um, you know, I've always, uh, you know, wanted to do like the you know type of soldier roles and things like that. So that was that was real fun to do, man. Mark actually worked with Denzel on uh, Saint Elsewhere as well. So exactly. so so we're we're, we're we're getting close. Exactly right. So we're getting close. Uh, you know, was able to able to talk to Mark through uh, you know at in between shots and he encouraged me to stick with it. You know, he said, you got a future at this, you know, um, he's just a great guy. He gave me some tips, you know, what to do, what not to do. And, uh, I've been fortunate to meet some really cool people, man, really helpful people. So, you know, which brings us to, to play. you said that was the second show that you were on now, some years later after that, you worked on this film, which is out now on Netflix. Uh, Jupiter's Legacy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I was watching, I believe, the first two episodes of that, and I'm like, man, this is like a full-on, you know, <laughs> uh, 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 you know, like, so it's like superheroes, and 
I'm like, man, this is some really, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just tripping yeah. off the fact because I'm, I'm because of the conversations we had about how you it's been filmed, but we met on SEAL Team. So that's right. kind of going in the order of the, you know what I'm saying, the, um, the, the order of filming. So when you filmed Jupiter's Legacy, how were you able to, to get that, that, that role um, in, in that, on, on that show? Man, you know, actually, um, that's one of those things about faith that I guess what I got to bring up, man, because as an actor, and, and that was my first series regular, but, you know, as an actor, you, you, you kind of got to do a lot. You know, you you audition in a bunch of times, these network tests, all this stuff. Um, so initially before that, man, I was I sat there and I was, okay, what is it that I want to do? You know, what, what do I want to do next? Um, this is before I got the opportunity for Jupiter's. And I was like, you know, I like to play the hero. I would like to play a superhero, things like that. So I was like, do I look like that? All right, well, let me, let me put on a few more pounds, a little more muscle, let me hit the gym a little bit harder. And I did that. Got the opportunity for Jupiter's. Uh, Stephen Denight said, well, I could definitely see you in a super suit because I, you know, put a little bit more size on me. Mm. And um, I went in for it a couple of times, man. It just was a really smooth process. Really? Uh, and at that point in my life, I just was like, you know, uh, I'm trying to do this in my own strength. It ain't working. Can you please just, you know, help me out? You know, this is my conversation with God. And that's when God said, all right, I got you, mm. you know. Um, uh, just, just, you try to do what you tried to do and you're willing to settle for this role and this and that. So that's what you were doing before you got Jupiter's legacy. You was kind of just kind of settling for certain roles, so to speak. Well, well, not, well, not so much that in my mind, I was like, well, let me, I just want to get a part. That's what, you know, sometimes you go through those periods. Yeah. Um, I've definitely turned, uh, some things down, uh, you know, not to sound arrogant, but, um, I, I'm choosy about what I do. You yeah, know? I mean, you don't want to be uh, like you. You don't want to take a role like you know, Thug Number Three. Exactly. In so the alley. And yeah, you know, so it's like, come I, on. yeah, so it wasn't like I was trying to do you know those type of things because I definitely have you know respectfully declined some things. Uh, but it's just a mentality of gripping gripping what you're trying to hold on to too tight. Mm -hmm. You got to relax, and that's when faith comes in. Mm. And when I said, hey, you know what, I, this ain't going how I, you know, this is, this is rough. And that's why I feel God stepped in and said, all right, well, let me show you what I have for you. And it was just a smoother process. So, now, you still got to do the work. Yeah, you still yeah. got to do the work. But yeah. it's not that tension. And things just improved for me at that point. You know, it's, it's you know, people call it surrender. So, so you, so before that, before Jupiter's Legacy came about, you were like, what, on the verge of like, doubt it was that doubt was was, was creeping oh yeah yeah I, oh absolutely man am um, i built for this am i just really is this do i really see myself really doing this for real like all that type of stuff was coming in play yeah because i didn't always have that conversation with other people but inside you 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 question me like man this is you know because what you'll do is you get knocked down you get up knock dust yourself off and that's maybe what people see but sometimes when you by yourself you you know you kind of wondering like man this is this is this is rough you know and pretty much every actor can uh relate to that man yeah so um that's why i share those stories and honestly one of the biggest things that i've enjoyed about booking jupiter's legacy booking seal team booking really any of the shows that i booked i've been able to give that encouraging word to my friends who have felt that way like man i think i might have to get out of this man because this, this is just rough and it's like i feel you I was there, you know, but just hold on. Yeah. And once I was able to relax, once my mind, I changed the way I saw things, uh, better things started showing up. You know, it's not necessarily an immediate thing. Yeah. It's more yeah. about me enjoying the work more. Yeah. And which is why I decided to do this in the first place. Mm. You know, um, for the work instead of trying to reach out and grab something. Well, because you're trying to control things. Yeah. And yeah. You can't control it. All you can control is your attitude and the effort that you put into it. And so I was able to say, all right, well, when I go into the audition room, the work that I did in rehearsal, did that show up? Did I have fun? Okay, cool. If those things happen, I'm good. If they call me back, you know, a callback, uh, want me to come back in? Cool. 
if I book the job, cool. If they don't, that's cool too, because I enjoyed it. And that's it. And it kind of felt like magic, but that's when things got better. And like I said, you don't, yeah, you're not going to book everything after it, but you just enjoy the moment. And mm. it feels like the things that you want, that's when they start showing up. That's interesting uh, to kind of hear your, your, your take on that. So it's, because I'm kind of going through that now, it's, you know, somewhat, you know, kind of in my space in the journey of it is to not really take the the downfalls personal. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Not really take them personal, just kind of, and it makes you uh, take each job in stride and appreciate the job in that moment. For whatever it is, appreciate it for that moment. And yeah. Because in this business, what may seem that it can last could be over tomorrow. Yeah, which well, is life. Which is life, it's, right? It's funny you mentioned that, man, because you just mentioned Jupiter's, and uh, we we actually uh, got word recently that the next season is not going to be focused on our characters. Mm. You know what I mean? So we just got done talking about faith, <laughs> mm. right? So. Are you gonna keep that attitude of that faith mentality, or is it all all is lost now because things didn't go the way you thought, or do you still have faith? So for me, I still count it all joy. I'm happy that we got to do it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that actually what they're gonna do is focus on the uh, something called super crooks. Those are villains, but they still live in the Jupiter's legacy world. Um, so. You know, we're free now to work on other projects. Mm. Um, and, you know, you have a choice in every moment to see the positivity in it, to see the possibilities, or to only see the, the negative, what you think is negative. I don't think this is a negative situation at all, uh, especially because we never know what could happen in the future. Uh, but, you know, it's still that attitude of faith. And it's like, you know, everything's all good. It's just as good as it was when I got the part, when I was working on it, you know, when the show came out, before it came out, everything is still just as beautiful. You know, it's just a matter of perspective. I so, like that, man. I like that. Yeah. that and, and so that's good for those who are watching this and for those who are hearing this to know, you know, wherever you are right now in your journey, you could be sitting here listening or watching this podcast and yeah. going through the same feelings, but yeah. to just know, whatever the case may be, don't take it personal and don't mm -hmm. read so much into what you think it is. And just to remember to enjoy the moment that you have in that situation and know that something something else is, is coming around the corner, something that can pretty much, that can change your life at the drop yeah. of a hat and you wouldn't even, at the blink of an eye, that yeah. was the last thing you would even thought about and boom. That's, um, that's, it's, that's what it is, man. So, so it leads us into SEAL Team. Now, SEAL Team has this following, um, you know, like he just completed the fourth season. Uh, they got renewed for a fifth season um, yeah. to now be on Paramount+. Plus. Um, how did it feel joining a group of guys um, in a show um, that was, uh, you know, a success on CBS? to where now you're entering into the fourth season. How did that go about you leading or landing that job? And what was it like working on that show for you? Yeah, man, that was, I was, I would call that another dream come true. Cause you know, I come off of playing a superhero for six months. Uh, you know, I get back to LA and um, yeah. Uh, so when I got the part, you know, I'm working with some some veteran actors that I really admire their work, man. I admire their careers. Um, everybody and everybody was welcoming. Everybody was helpful. I mean, I'm like these these are some great people. The actors, the crew, um, and like you mentioned, the fans, man. It's some diehard fans. They they love die some Blackbird. So <laughs> so you know, not everybody was feeling Soto at first. Some people may not be still, but uh, yeah, yeah. but uh, you know. I believe that Soto is starting to grow on them, and uh, uh, Soto was necess is, is necessary uh, to tell a complete story on SEAL Team. Uh, but as far as getting a part, though, when I got back uh, to L.A. from filming Jupiter's Legacy, I had about two auditions uh, at, you know, at, for SEAL Team. 
And over the years, I've been coming in for SEAL Team, you know, a bunch, man. Mm. And, and so this is another story I share with people uh, because there were times where I'm feeling like, oh, yeah, I feel good about that. My reps will say, oh, yeah, we think you got that one. And then I'm not getting it. And you're like, man, I should. I, you feel like you should have got it, whatever you're feeling. When I got the role of Lieutenant Soto, I was like, that's why I didn't get those other parts. Mm. Soto, this this role blows those other parts out of the water, man. Wow. I, I enjoyed them. Yeah. I enjoy I enjoyed those other parts. When I'm auditioning for them, I'm I'm having fun, you know. But when I got this part, I was like, okay, now I get it. Now I get it. That's faith. That's once again that voice saying, Hey, I got you. You may think you want this. I got this over here for you, which you'll enjoy better. So it's just a matter of faith, you know. It's like uh, that meme, it's like that meme where it shows uh was like uh uh with the little girl holding uh she she wants like a teddy bear, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You get you gotta let it go, man. You gotta it's it's faith, you gotta trust it. And for you know, people who are listening, maybe they don't believe in the same God or they call God by a different name, maybe they don't believe in God. It's just still having faith, man. You know, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's the, the better thing is coming. You just got to keep the right attitude because what you could do is get jaded and then you go into the audition room with a bad attitude and they're like, well, we don't want to work with this person. You just shot yourself in the foot. You know, keep, keep the right perspective, man. No matter what's going on, keep the right perspective. And that beautiful thing is going to be yours. You know? So, so looking at all of this, how, uh, like, how does your mom feel? How does your mom feel when she's oh, on TV and sees where you are? She, she's very proud, man. She's, yeah, she's on top of the world and just uh, enjoying That's it. That's my baby yeah. on TV. That's, yep, she, she's my proud. Friend. You know, you know, as uh, little boys, we always want to make mom proud, you know, uh, especially those of us who, you know, uh, it was just me, you know, me and mom for a minute. You know, yeah. I feel like a lot of times we have kind of a special relationship with our mother. Yeah. You know, and now I, I, now I do have a father who's, who raised me. And, yeah. You know, we don't. He's not my stepfather. He's my father. You know, yeah. there was no there was no steps in our house. Mm. Uh, we we just we just family. Mm. And uh, he taught me a lot of things, and uh, he's he's very proud too. Uh, but. Yeah, man. I mean, they're, they're loving it. They get to see me on two shows. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful thing. That's crazy. And then they, they can tell people that they know, like, hey, yeah, check it out. Oh, my son, he's on there. Woo, woo, woo. Absolutely, and, yeah. So have you uh, felt like the, you know, the whole being out in the grocery store and somebody sees you? <laughs> have you experienced that yet, man? Um, no, I don't, I don't think I've experienced that, man. Well, because um, we're wearing masks. We got the mask. We're a mask so I, yeah. I guess once the mask come off. Yeah, well, hopefully when they do see me, it's, it's all good. Because like I said, not everybody likes Soto. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, but no, not, I mean, not, not even that, but even from Jupiter's Legacy, too. Yeah, yeah. No, well, yeah. Um, it, everybody loves that character. Uh, Fitz so, um, is a very lovely character. Tell me this. Has there ever been a moment where you, you know, you were just receiving these blessings and you just broke down and cried? Man, there's, yeah, I mean, you know what, man? Um, there's been times where it just hits me. I'm like, wow, this is like everything that I wanted is here and it's still growing. You know what I mean? Like I'm not done. I'm not stopping, but it's just like, I just realized how blessed I am, man. You know, I'm working with people that I used to, you know, watch their movies and like, it kind of is, it's a kind of a mind blowing thing, you know? Uh, you know, honestly, dude, I keep it as far as keeping the right attitude. Um, like I said, I, I, uh, I celebrate or remember, uh, you know, December 7th when I, uh, you know, left my regular job and went into acting. Um, and also, man, you know, this is a personal thing to share with you. Every Friday, man, I, I sit there and I just think about all the great things that are going on in my life. Mm. You know what I mean? I schedule it in my calendar. And I just sit there. I mean, sometimes I write it down, yeah. but I just I just think about it because, yeah, man. I mean, you I, said you said I, every Friday. Every every Friday, yeah. Every you know Friday. what? I think I think I think that day that day I seen you when you was walking. I was in in the I was in the trailer. And I think I was like cleaning my clippers. And I looked outside. 
and you was walking by with the shades on, walking through the trailer. I, was like, man, I think that was on a Friday, man. It probably was. I, had I think it was on a Friday because that was that day. You was just like, man, I'm just blessed, man. I'm I'm feeling, <laughs> I'm feeling good. I'm coming in to work. I'm, you know what I mean? I'm, I mean, and so I think like certain people get it. And when I saw you and you had the shades on, I was like, yeah, he 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 floating right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, and I get it. And you know what I mean? Because I look at my life and where I'm at the same way. Sometimes it takes a moment to kind of digest it because yeah. um, you see, because because you're kind of like by yourself doing it. And yeah. you know how far you come along in your journey. And so you find this space to where sometimes you just kind of keep your head down and keep moving forward. But when you lift your head up and really that's exactly and what it is. And think about everything. It's like, wow, man. And so kind of like that 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 confidence, not 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 cockiness, but like kind of a a confident level in you starts to kind of show. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um yeah. you hit it on the head when you described it like that because yeah, I'm so used to and not to cut you off, I want to just throw this in there for people yeah. who 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 are listening. I'm so used to having my head down and just going, going, going. But when I lift up, it's like, oh, shoot. All that stuff I've been working for is right in front of me. It's here now. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, it, absolutely. It brings tears to your eyes. You're like, it's just uh, it's the gratitude. Yeah. It's grateful, man. So it's like, it's, like, it's like a part of me for a while, I was having somewhat of like survivor's uh, remorse. Yeah. Oh, well, that's the thing, too. Yeah, that's the thing too, man. We feel guilty about yes uh, achieving, yes. even though we worked so hard for so right. many years. Yes. We sacrificed so much, yeah, yeah. To, to get what we wanted. Yeah, but then we feel that. So that's like a subconscious thing. Mm. It's like a programming thing that we got to shift. Mm. But uh, yeah, I, I know that I, I had to deal with that too. You know, and, it's kind of like one of those things where it's like, okay, so when somebody gonna come? When's Ashton Kutcher gonna come around the corner and say, "We <laughs> you, man"? Ah, it's like, oh, come on, man. You know, that's I mean? it. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's we gotta we gotta accept that it's here, it's ours, and enjoy it, and uh, continue to grow. And and uh, through us exercising our gifts, we'll bless somebody else, and you know, uh, they'll be telling their story. On uh, I used to say Jay Leno, but you know, Jimmy Fallon or whoever it is. Yeah. It's just about that inspiration, how it keeps going, man. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's it's yeah. We're gonna be telling that story on the Lounge with Skip podcast. Right? Yeah, there, there, there you go. <laughs> now, now, where do you see yourself in the next ten years, man? Next ten years, man. I hope to. Where be... do you want to see yourself in the next ten years? Yeah, what what I what I'm hoping is uh, it's be a household name, man. Mm. To be somebody that uh, continues to inspire, just on a larger scale. Uh, you know, continue to do some television, film, whatever medium it may be, just telling powerful stories that uh, are going to inspire people, but also, well, yeah, inspire people to go for what they want in life, but also just to make the best choices, to have uh, conversations that they need to have, to show that love, that understanding, you know, and just to make progress within our own selves, but also with our families, our communities, and ultimately the world. So I want to inspire as many people as I can. So if I can do that globally, that's what, uh, if I'm not there in 10 years, that's that's what I'm going towards. Mm. So you never know, man. You may get casted up in like the best man three or something, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The best man reboot or something, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You'd be on some on that next on that Tay Diggs wave or something, man. Yeah, you yeah. No, man. Um never, so never just know. this last minute um uh, words of encouragement for that actor or actress living in, mm. you know, small town in um, you know, Louisiana who wants to, you know, leave Louisiana and travel to LA to, you know, saying achieve their, you know, chase their dreams. What is uh uh one thing, one, you know, uh something of encouragement to keep them going? What would you uh, tell them? What I would, what I say to him, man, is uh, is follow the love. S stay connected to the love. 
hopefully you're doing this and you want to do this because you love it. That's going to guide you uh, in the best way. Um, it's nothing wrong with wanting to have money and things like that. You know, you got to pay the bills, but just stay connected to what really matters. Mm. That was really going to motivate you. Our acting coach, uh, first year, she said, you guys better have a good reason to be here or you're going to quit. Mm. She, she was referring to class and she was also referring to just acting period mm. because you got to go through too much not to love it. Wow. So hold on to the love that's going to guide you. And what I mean by the love is when you're in Louisiana or wherever you may be, whatever it is you're doing, if you're taking classes, if you're doing plays, be in love with that moment and what you're doing. Mm. You know, we got to love pretty much every aspect of this. That's how it works. Mm. You know, um, going to the auditions, uh, filming your auditions, whatever it is, doing that student film, stay connected to the love. And it, it will guide you. It, it will, it'll get you where you need to be every step of the way. Cool. Um, just to kind of, uh, you know, for those who want to reach out to you, um, you know, maybe like some, you know, up and coming, you know, directors or whatever they want to say, you know, reach out or whatever, or, you know, fans or whatnot. Um, how can they reach out, reach out to you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You can. Um, I'm on social media. Um, what am I on? I'm on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Twitter. Okay. I think Instagram is probably what I use the most. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not too, too much. I see them numbers uh, going up too, man. I'm, I'll, I'll keep them numbers is going up on Instagram, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I see that, yeah, really man. Are, man. I, I know. So I was like, wow. I see that. A lot of people like, man, like, I'm like, hold uh, on, man. I'm like, hold on. He was just at 300. Now he got to get Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's, I saw yeah, that. It's, I can't even really keep track of it to be honest with you. Like, so really? if anybody, if yeah, if, if somebody like if somebody that I know follows me, yeah. I may not notice it, man. Because being honest, it's like yeah, it's it's a lot of numbers. It's a lot of a lot more interaction than mm -hmm. before, which which I love. I appreciate. Uh, so yeah, what what I was saying was, uh, you know, as far as social media goes, it's mostly just for work. But I definitely respond to people. Uh, I welcome people to, to, you know, come and check out what's going on. And uh, once again, Instagram is the, the main one that I use. Okay. But at everything, it's um, at Mike Wade Actor. And they can check me out. And there's also act, a link act, to my Mike, website. Mike, actor? Mike Wade Actor, yes. Okay. And uh, there's a link to my website as well so they can see uh, some of my previous works, more photos, you know, a little bio, you know, kind of see what I'm about. Yeah. Well, Mike, hey, man, I appreciate you, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad you was able to lounge with me, man. I know we had talked about this, you know what I'm saying, the trailer. And, you know, I was just sitting around, um, what was it, maybe a couple weeks ago. I was like, you know what? I need to go ahead and interview this man because, you know, you never know, man. This man right here can be on the next, uh, he could be the next Marvel superhero or something, man. You know yeah, you never know. I want to catch up. I want to catch him now before I can't even <laughs> catch him, you know what I'm saying? So... Let me go and get him yeah. there. Mike, I appreciate you, man. And thank you, man, for coming to lounge with me, bro. Bro, I, I appreciate you, man, for real. Uh, and uh, thank you for having me. For sure, man. Salute you. All right, brother. All right, man. Talk to you soon. All right, peace.